My wife asked me to go get six cans of Sprite from the grocery store. I realized when I got home that I had picked seven up. Today, I'm going to recap a 2009 action thriller film called Ninja. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. The movie tells the story of a man named Casey Bauman, who lives in a martial arts dojo in Japan, led by Takeda Sensei. Through his perseverance and desire to master Bushido, Casey earns the respect of his sensei and his daughter, Namiko. As he trains with Namiko, we see that there is a bond between them. Takeda Sensei realizes this and approaches to tell them to leave their emotions aside and focus completely. Sensei gives a little guidance on martial arts practice, where every fighter must remain calm and clear-headed against all opponents in battle. That evening, Takeda Sensei opens a chest in which was a Yoro Ebitsu, an ancient ninja suit and weapon that had been passed down from generation to generation by his sensei. Ninjas emerged as mercenaries in the 15th century, where they were recruited as spies, raiders, arsonists, and even terrorists. A sense of ritual and decorum was observed among the samurai, and they were expected to fight or duel openly. Ninjas were masters of martial arts, and very often used poison for blackmail. They held a person's life and death in their hands. When Takeda will pass away, another student of his will take his place, and with it, Yoroi Bitsu. Takeda Sensei then gathered all his students in the dojo and announced that Keisei and Masazuka are the best students in the dojo, but only one of them would have to prove himself worthy of taking over the Yoroi Bitsu. Hearing this, Masazuka seems to object to the juxtaposition with Keisei and considers himself superior to the latter. Masazuka hates Keisei even more because of the closeness between Namiko and Keisei. Casey was taken into the dojo while still a baby when his parents abandoned him. Nevertheless, he managed to become one of Takeda's most outstanding students. Later, Masazuka and Casey continue to train hard and watch each other. Casey is always the last one to finish training, and many are fascinated by it. The next day, a fight awaits them that will decide who is the best, and Masazuka tries to play with Casey's emotions by making fun of his past. Takeda Sensei steps in between them and tells Masazuka to be careful about his actions because there will be consequences. Soon, Takeda Sensei arranges a sparring match and asks Casey and Masazuka to fight each other. Because of the hatred and jealousy for Casey in his heart, Masazuka immediately brutally attacks Casey. Takeda Sensei tells him to stop, but Masazuka is already filled with anger pays no attention to his sensei's words, and continues to attack Casey. Masazuka almost kills Casey by aiming his katana right at his chest, but Casey manages to block the attack. In self-defense, Casey wounds Masazuka under his right eye. Due to his actions committing a serious violation, Masazuka is eventually expelled from the dojo by Takeda Sensei. Disappointed by his sensei's decision, Masazuka vows to take revenge on all members of the dojo. Years later in New York, at the Temple Industries plant, a secret organization, called The Ring, is leading a procession to welcome new members. New members can officially be part of the group, after having the group symbol stamped on their chest. In Russia, two of the leaders of Russia's largest companies are involved in a conflict with The Ring. Both are to be executed by a murderous ninja who is none other than Masazuka. In fact, the mercenary works for the ring and easily neutralizes Russians involved in a deal. A few days later, in the Koga Dojo led by Takeda Sensei, the latter gathers all his students because he is about to display the Yoroi Bitsu that had been assigned to him during his 30 years as Sok or Grandmaster. By now, Takeda Sensei must pass the treasure on to the next generation and at that moment, Masazuka appears. He claims succession as the next Sok at the Koba Dojo, but Takeda Sensei refuses. Masazuka threatens everyone and says they will regret not crowning him as the new Grandmaster. Anticipating an invasion by Masazuka, Takeda Sensei assigns Keisei and Namiko to protect Yoro Ibitsu. According to Sensei, Casey is the only person who can protect his daughter and Yoro Ibitsu because he has a clean heart. Long story short, Casey and Namiko managed to bring Yoro Ibitsu to New York, 
where they keep the casket safe in the vault of Triboro University, with the help of one of Takeda Sensei's best friends, Professor Garrison. At that moment, Masazuka is in his laboratory, where he is preparing for the attack. Takeda Sensei is waiting for him to arrive and begins to meditate. Meanwhile, Casey is having lunch with Professor Garrison, not suspecting anything. He tells how he came to the dojo, and the professor is amazed. In Japan, Masazuka storms the dojo in the evening. One by one, he eliminates all the students in the dojo. After killing every single fighter in the dojo, Masazuka confronts his teacher, Takeda Sensei. Masazuka does not know that Casey and Namiko have hidden the Yoro Ibitsu in New York, so he tries to kill the sensei in order to steal the treasure, which is actually an empty box. Masazuka realizes that he cannot defeat his sensei fairly, so he turns off the lights and activates the night vision goggles. The master closes his eyes and tries to use his other senses, but Masazuka hits him with poison. He pulls out the antidote and calls for the Yoro Ibitsu. Sensei says he regretted the day when he welcomed him into the dojo. Masazuka is morally devastated and kills Takeda. On the other hand, Namiko tries to contact her father, who was at the dojo, but gets no response. As he is about to leave after killing Takeda Sensei, Masazuki hears the phone ring, and the name and number of the caller, Paul Garrison, appears on the screen. He realizes that the treasure is in New York, and immediately contacts the ring to track down Paul Garrison's location. Meanwhile, the protagonist, who is in New York, tries to find out the whereabouts of a friend of his mother. After visiting her last address, he is told that she had died a few months earlier from a stroke. He returns to Professor Garrison's house and tells Namiko about it. At the same time, Masazuka, who already knew where they were, sends his henchmen to kill them both. In addition to Casey and Namiko, Professor Garrison and his family are also targeted by Masazuka. His henchmen manage to kill them all. It is truly fascinating to see how Master Takeda's students defend the Yoro Ibitsu with their lives. By a miracle, Casey and Namiko manage to survive the surprise attack. The two manage to escape and hide in an inn. While watching television, the two are shocked by a news report that they both have been identified as the perpetrators of the murder of Professor Garrison and his family. They are now wanted by the police. Namiko suggests asking the police for help, but Casey realizes that they would be locked up and Masazuka would steal the Yoro Ibitsu. Therefore, they must find a place to hide the treasure as soon as possible. The next morning, Casey wakes up alone and begins to worry. He goes downstairs to look for Namiko and finds her. As the cafe owner makes coffee, he notices Casey and Namiko's faces in the newspaper. Casey notices that the man is very upset about something and notices two mercenaries outside. The ring's henchmen again attack them. They easily beat the men who entered and begin to flee into the street. But it is not over because there is another group of henchmen on their trail. The pair escape into the subway and try to blend in with the people. The henchmen check each carriage and finally engage in a fight in a carriage carrying many people. Thanks to years and years of training in the dojo, the two manage to defeat the bad guys, despite being outnumbered. When they manage to escape Masazuka's henchmen and get off the train, the police immediately ambush Casey and Namiko and take them to the police station. The two are interrogated, but their story about Masazuka does not seem credible to the officers. Meanwhile, the villain visits the ring and asks if they have found Casey and Namiko. The head henchman steps forward and says they have not found the Yoro Ibitsu and that the two are in the police station. Furious, Masazuka kills him in front of everyone and threatens to kill them one by one if they cannot find Casey and Namiko. That night, Masazuka, disguised as Namiko's lawyer, sneaks into the police station. Once inside, he cuts off the electricity. The officers leave Casey and Namiko alone and go outside to check what is wrong. In the darkness, Masazuka kills several police officers with his katana. Namiko is taken outside by officers, but they are killed, and she is knocked out. Casey, who has been tied to the table, manages to break it and free himself. He arrives in the hallway, where he finds the agents lifeless. At one point, he meets the agents and is ordered to get on the ground, 
but suddenly, Masazuka arrives. Amid the chaos, Casey saves one of the policemen from being shot by Masazuka, who kidnaps Namiko. The officer is petrified and realizes that Casey is not worth holding and lets him go. Masazuka keeps Namiko somewhere and urges her to reveal the whereabouts of Yorohibitsu. Masazuka reveals to Namiko that he killed his father and all the dojo members because they had betrayed him. After getting a clue about Masazuka from one of the thugs who attacked him, Casey breaks into Temple Industries. He bravely fights all the henchmen of the ring group and captures their leader. He obtains Masazuka's phone number from the company's president, Mr. Call, and calls him. Casey agrees to exchange Yoro Yibitsu for Namiko's life, and they arrange to meet later that night. Casey rushes to the university to get the treasure. He finds the Yoro Yibitsu and puts on a ninja suit and arms himself. He takes his time and performs the ritual according to the rules. Meanwhile, Mr. Call orders his men to go and kill Casey and Masazuka. Later, Masazuka heads directly to the construction site that Casey had arranged. Upon arriving at the site, Casey orders him to free Namiko while bringing down the chest. Masazuka sees that the chest of Yoroi Bitsu lowered from the crane is empty and becomes enraged. Soon after, Casey, wearing the Yoroi Bitsu, appears in front of Masazuka. As the two men prepare for the final battle, at the same time, members of the ring arrive, ambushing them on the leader's orders. Masazuka, Casey, and Namiko fight against the henchmen and defeat them without taking any damage. Namiko uses the bow stored in the Yorohi Bitsu and shows some outstanding skills. After successfully defeating the entire ring army, Masazuka and Casey begin to fight hard. The villain uses a blowpipe to shoot a poisoned arrow at Namiko and taunts Casey with the antidote bottle. The two end up fighting fiercely, and Masazuka accidentally drops the antidote bottle, and Casey becomes enraged. As the NYPD helicopter sheds light on the fight, Masazuka uses a ninjutsu technique to blind Casey with the glare of his katana, then disappears in front of him. To cope with the attack, Casey uses the same technique as the sensei. He closes his eyes and uses his other senses to counterattack, and stabs Masazuka lethally. Casey immediately runs to Namiko. He is devastated because Masazuka had thrown out the antidote, but here he suddenly remembers the sensei's teachings. The master always told him that the ninja katana has the power to kill and heal. He then finds the antidote in the handle of Masazuka's katana. Within seconds, the antidote succeeds in neutralizing the poison, and Namiko is saved. Before leaving, Casey ends Masazuka's life honorably. The next day, a police officer informs Casey and Namiko that they were acquitted of the charge of being the murderers. Not only that, but the police were also able to arrest the leader of the secret group and destroy the ring for good. The agent then returns their passports to them and asks them to leave New York. Casey and Namiko return to Japan to pay their respects to their late sensei and continue running the Koba Dojo and overseeing the Yoro Ibitsu. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the whole movie, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.